Seiger of the Texas Board of Wildlock, Nathan Skeen. And Abdi, he's, he has a unique situation in that he's, you need up here? Okay. I'm trying to introduce Nathan. Let's come on, come on. I'm, me. I'm going to say one thing you may not say, and I just he's, uh, he's from White Oak. He is. And is, is stationed at a spot that's really close to where he grew up, and that's, I think, very unusual for game warden. Um, Thomas cannot be here today, it's Thomas Smith's program, but uh, he asked me to introduce Nathan. Nathan was born and raised uh, here in East Texas, as Pete said, graduated White Oak High School where he played baseball. Um, he also attended UT Tyler. Um, played a year of professional ball until his wife told him to get a real job. Uh, so, uh, a real job. Game warden, I guess, was as close to, to, to Nathan as uh, a real job could be. Um, I've been a game warden for about a little over six years. Been an Archer County game warden for the past year. Uh, he has, as Pete said, a unique office at Union Grove High School. Uh, also an office here in the northern end of the county at the uh, Upshur County Sheriff's Office. Um, he and his wife have two children. They do still live in the Union Grove community. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our Upshur County game warden, Mr. Nathan Skeen. <laughs> I'm going to try to get used to using a mic. Usually it's just like yelling at people across the lake or, or uh, in the woods or something like that. So I'm going to try to go through this as quick as possible. i got a lot of good pictures. Uh, some at the end. There's some cases that we've made in the past. Um, so if you see your neighbors or anything like that, just don't tell them. You got the one. No, they're all, all these cases are done. So the picture up there? That's, that's it. So uh, we've been around. Uh, Game Board's been around for over 100 years. We're state peace officers. A lot of folks don't realize that. So if you're driving down the highway and you run a stop sign or, or you know, throw trash out, uh, you know, don't have headlights, we can pull you over for that. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize that we have, we're like a deputy slash trooper slash police slash game warden. So we kind of do all that, but our main our main focus is our hunting, fishing, and water safety laws uh, on that. There's 500 of us across the state, roughly. Uh, one in Upshur County, so just me. Um, and me and the Gray County guy, we also kind of partner together. So between us two, we got roughly 150,000 folks uh, that we service. Um, a bachelor's degree is required to be a, a Texas game warden. Uh, so a four-year degree in anything. And our academy is seven months long. I think it's one of the longest, uh, I think it is the longest in the state. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. And, and pretty pretty long for the nation, too, on that. And they did some kind of study that said something about, you know, um, it's the odds of, of getting into Harvard would be better than the odds of getting into the Game Warren Academy. Just because, you know, we may have 30, 25, 30 spots for an academy class, and we have, you know, 2,000 applicants. Or something like that. So, um, but it's a it's a great career, best job in law enforcement, e easily. I mean, our office is in the woods and in the water. So, outside all the time, I couldn't do the office stuff. I, I got to be out and about. Uh, here's some few few pictures of our academy. I, to me, I'm kind of biased, but uh, I think it's the the best facility for for game wardens and uh, and uh, natural resource police uh, in the, in the state or in the in the nation. Uh, so, our academy is located out in, uh, in Hamilton, Texas. Anybody know where that is? Kind of out west of uh, Waco, about an hour and a half or so. Uh, hill country. It's, it's uh, feels like you're the only people on earth out there. So it's, uh, it's it's good sometimes, but you're ready to get back on the weekends when when you can. Um, so during our academy, we do all kinds of training. Obviously, we we you know firearms training, scenario training, a lot of classroom training to learn laws. And, Good stuff like that. Water training, we're on the water a lot, so we have a lot of uh, you know scenario trainings. But you know we make a contact like this picture right here, and the contact goes south. You know how to handle ourselves if we're on a boat, if we're on a dock, on, on the shoreline, stuff like that. So a lot of physical training, also running and, and doing stuff like that. That's actually one of our requirements to get in. You got to do push-ups, a, a lot of amount of push-up setups. Run a sprint, run a, a mile and a half, all that good stuff. Swim, so that's some of the requirements we have. Um, after your seven months are up, you uh, you graduate at the state capitol, which is a pretty cool deal. You, sometimes you have your your government, you know, senators, representatives 
even the governor sometimes shows up, uh, and then you're stationed anywhere in the state of Texas. So they make it clear when you sign up that you're going to go anywhere. So you could end up in El Paso, you could end up in Brownsville, you could end up right back here. So it's kind of the kind of the luck of the draw. I was fortunate and got got lucky. My first uh, five years of, of being a game warden, I was down in Shelby County, uh, in the center Nacogdoches area. So uh, it's a uh, Good, good work down there for sure. What happens behind the pine curtain stays behind the pine curtain. That's the old sand down there. So uh, there's no close season on animals down there either. They like to, they like to hunt. A lot of woods, a lot of water. So, so here's uh, here's what you may see driving down the road out here. You might see us pulling. This is kind of a typical, you know, water safety rig here, uh, which is right now we're kind of right in the middle of it, winding down toward toward uh, you know school starting and hunting season starting back up. Which is my favorite time. Like I was telling, telling him uh, earlier, uh, you know, we, we you remember the hunting cases you make, not so much all the fishing license tickets you might ride and stuff like that, but you might remember that poacher that's you know shooting from the road that runs from you know, trespassing and all that good stuff. So, which that could happen anytime, but mainly during hunting season. So here's uh, some of our stuff on the coast. A lot of folks don't realize, you know, hey, well, there's there's game wardens down there that work the uh, the Gulf of Mexico and the bays and stuff like that. So here's a little bit of our fleet. We got some 60, 70 foot big boats for out in the Gulf. We got some of these big safe boats that you know go to the border and, and they work the bays and, and, and stuff like that. So Governor Abbott kind of calls it the Texas Navy. That's what that's his uh, his big thing. So we have resources by the air. Uh, used it a lot during Hurricane Harvey, uh, which is recent. There's one of our safe boats there. Um, bottom left, that's kind of like your typical what you'd see me or any of your guys around here in a flat bottom on the river, creeks, uh, lakes. And we do deal with alligators. Uh, so in the academy, you're actually trained to, to handle those, to, to relocate and, and do whatever's needed on, some, on stuff like that. We actually, uh, we had one, I guess a month or so ago, trying to cross uh, 450 up here in War City, just middle of the road, hanging out about five footer. So we have uh, canine uh, units. Uh, these are some guys on the border down there. We used to be down there 365 days a year, 24 seven game morns would be down there on the Rio, uh, patrolling and, and stuff like that. Now it's more of on an as needed basis, uh, but we used to rotate pretty heavily down there. Uh, do a lot of programs, like kind of what we're doing here, school programs, um, and that's just your typical water safety uh, water safety inspection up there on the, on the right. Anybody ever been checked by me or, or somebody else? Another game warden? No tickets, right? Hopefully not. Life jackets, licenses, all that good stuff. Throw cushion, fire extinguisher. So hunting and fishing, you know, our duck hunters, uh, Upshur County, we have a lot of, you know, Lake of the Pines up there, the north end of Lake of the Pines, which is where mainly all of our duck hunters go when they go to Lake of the Pines. Uh, so it can get pretty crazy out there when you get all these guys out there that get out there at midnight and camp out, and they're in my spot. No, they're, you go over there, you know. Uh, they get in fights, but they don't realize it's public water, so that's why they get out there at midnight. Uh, for six ducks, they're, they're crazy. I, I don't think I'd do that. Um, and, you know, of course, dove season's coming up in September, so uh, that'll that's kind of our our kickoff the hunting season. We we like getting out there at sunrise and getting that smell of gunpowder in the air again. It's always a good good feeling to getting off the off the water and back in the woods. So anybody ever seen Lone Star Law? So it's a show on Animal Planet they have that goes around and you kinda of can jump in a truck with, with one of us and uh, and go on there and, and you see what we do on an everyday basis. If you hadn't seen it it's a pretty good show. I check it out. Uh, I know they're filming a new season so Maybe they'll show up in Upshur County, we don't know. So here's a few previous cases we have. So anybody know what that is? Tim, timber rattlesnake, it's actually a, a protected species. And everybody's like, well yeah, it's gonna need protection when it's around me, you know. Uh, so they're illegal to kill. Uh, this one was killed and um, and somebody was bragging about it and, and somebody got, somebody told on them and that's how it kind of happens. And so, um, Anyways, he was pretty big. What's the plan with it? Uh, it's a Class C misdemeanor for just a timber rattler, unless you want to get the federal game wardens involved. Then it can go, you know, it can go on up from there. 
But uh, I mean, up to five hundred dollars just for that snake plus restitution, which could be another five hundred dollars. <laughs> you what? You wait? Yeah. We'll talk. We'll talk later. I need to get his information, Troy, uh, before we roll out of here. He's very, very poisonous. So in this case right here, this is actually in the, my old county, and uh, I, I received a call of a from a neighbor. I said, "There's a deer in this person's backyard." Which one is illegal? We all know that you've got to have permits and uh, and all that good stuff to be able to keep wildlife. And um, so I went, and I'm back there chasing this deer around, which we're not really chasing. It's kind of like a dog that just walked right up to you. And so I loaded it up, but while I was looking around back there in the back, uh, I noticed a few more pairs of antlers and, and some skulls. And so kind of the investigation started kind of rolling. And uh, long story short, this guy had a garden in his backyard. And this, this doe and this fawn would always come out and eat his tomatoes and whatever else he had out there. So unfortunately he shot the shot the doe and uh, this is like in April. So you can tell he's, he's, a, he's a newborn fawn with the white spots. And um, so kill the doe. So one, that's that's a big no-no right there, waste of game. He, he just drug it out in the woods. He didn't even try to eat it or anything. And um, and of course keeping, keeping the baby. But these antlers kind of got me thinking of what was going on. So I, I kind of Questioned him about it, and uh, he killed the whitetail out in a, at a ranch in Central Texas, and uh, the elk he also killed out there. Well, he didn't have a hunting license for either one of those deer either. So, I think when it was all said and done, this guy ended up paying over thirty-five hundred dollars in fines um, for all these uh, violations he had on all this. So, so here's a here's a few more cases. Uh, dove season's coming up, so. The top left picture is some shotguns, some decoys. Uh, this guy had uh, had Milo strung out in his field where he was hunting doe over bait. You can't hunt migratory birds over any kind of attractant bait, anything like that. So, you know, chicken scratch, corn, Milo, anything like that, you can't do that. So he had done that, and uh, he thought he was doing it legally because he tried to cover it up all, all the seed and stuff. But you could still, it was like a trail, you could see it. Pretty obvious. He argued with me for a little bit, and he lost that argument. Uh, this guy on the right. Um, so all those are our, our turtle traps, actually. And what they were doing was this is down on the Sabine River, and uh, he was catching all these turtles in these traps. And apparently, that that type of turtle—I forgot what the actual name of it was—is a delicacy over in Asia, China, and over there. So what this guy was doing is he was catching all these turtles illegally, and, and there was a ton in there, all those traps. There was like 20 traps. And uh, he was shipping them overseas to, uh, to them in, in Asia, white market stuff. So that, that kind of started the investigation there. It was turned over to the feds, and it ended up being a pretty big case for them. It ended up going all the way into you know, other states and everything like that. It was a big operation. Um, Everybody these days does social media, Facebook, which we receive calls daily on, on the stuff that gets posted on on that. And this is actually, I don't know if y'all have heard of that Snapchat app. I don't know, y'all might have that stuff. You take a picture and you send it out to your friends and it kind of goes away after like 10 seconds or something like that. So somebody was smart enough to uh, screenshot in that five, 10 seconds, that picture of that, uh, that owl down there um, a great horned owl, and uh, he put owl got him, and, he, and I guess he, well, what he did was he shot it and uh, posted it on social media, and um, so that got him in a bind pretty quick. Of course, he didn't know what we were talking about until we showed him the picture. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, about that. Kind of, kind of, uh, uh, hung his head. So with our job, we run into, like I said, we're. We're state peace officers. Uh, we run into a lot of this stuff, unfortunately, around here as well. Um, your drugs, narcotics, marijuana, uh, meth. I think I've made more felony cases this month than Class C uh, riding, you know, fishing license, life jacket tickets, which is pretty sad. Um, so a lot of this, uh, a lot of this going around, unfortunately. 
this is a case here in, in Upshur County, uh, actually on Facebook. Uh, an individual had posted a photo of a, a nice, nice deer. It's a big six point, I think it's like 22 inches into that spread. Um, he posted it like 11 o'clock or, or 10.30. Or something like that 10 30 online so you can go online and you can see when they post it on facebook and stuff like that well started looking into it a little bit more and uh, he actually didn't buy a hunting license until like 12 o'clock <laughs> and so you know so you start looking at it and you're like well you know, he posted it at 10 30 and then he would, goes and buys a hunting license at 12 o'clock so we can see all that on our phones so we go and visit with this guy and um, he thinks everything's cool. He just thinks we want to see this big deer he shot. And uh, so, long story short, we said, so so let's see your hunt license. Well, on the hunt license is actually time, time stamp, date, everything on there also. And so we get to talk to him, and he's like, yeah, I shot, a, I shot another deer earlier this year, too. I said, oh, well, when did you shoot that? Uh, back in October, I guess, bow season. Well, I'm, I'm sitting here holding this guy's hunting license. Hmm. No tags are missing. I'm like, why didn't you tag? You're supposed to after you immediately kill or harvest an animal. And he said, oh, I just forgot. You know, I'm sorry. And so, uh, I mean, he's just, we're just sitting there listening to this guy talk, just digging his grave. He doesn't realize that we already know what's <coughs> going on. And so once we confronted him, he just kind of hung his head. And uh, he said, well, am I going to get to the least keep the horns? I said, no, no probably not. So, uh, so we ended up seizing those, and I think his total fine was restitution for a deer that size. It's probably about $1,500, plus all the, uh, all the other uh, violations he had. Uh, I think it was in the $2,000 uh, $2, range, two to $3,000. So that's just a little bit of kind of what we deal with on a, on a daily basis. And... Uh, I'm doing good on time. That's good. I don't want to get up here and too long-winded. Um, you know, if, if you see us out there, you know, say hi. We, we always like visiting with folks and, and seeing everybody. You see us on the lake, everybody's wearing sunglasses. There's one of me and a lot of y'all. So uh, sometimes I may not recognize, you know, you on the, uh, on the water or something like that. And if I do, I'll, I'll be like, hey, we need to check these folks good. <laughs> Stuff like that. But um, anyway, here's... Uh, Here's some few pictures of Hurricane Harvey that was down there. Um, probably one of the worst floods, and I think it is the worst flood in Texas history. Um, I was actually down in Deweyville, which is a small community north of uh, Beaumont Orange. We got to there. We were down there for about seven or eight days. And um, got quite a few people out. And uh, that's, that's, a US, that's a major U.S. highway right there, underwater, about eight foot of water. Um, until you, until you get down there and see that kind of stuff that you see it on the news and, and, uh, and stuff like that, but until you get down there and see it, it'll open your eyes up for sure. These folks lost almost everything, or did lose everything. I know there was a lot of volunteers from, from our county and, and around the state that went down there also, which is awesome, uh, to help out other folks. There's a new house being built. Uh, this this uh, community actually got flooded when uh, we had that rain, the rains back in, I guess that was what, 2011, 20, no, 2012. The floods down there and below Toledo Bend, uh, the lake, when they let the spillway <laughs> gates go. Um, this lady, she finally came out. She didn't want to leave her dogs behind. Um, we said, we can get your dogs too. So she was happy to see us that day because when she lost power and she lives way down in the woods, um, she realized it was time for her to, to ease on out of there. Um, so here we're just launching boats off off highways into ditches and then where the creeks and the rivers flood and, and all the flash flooding back in the back we're just riding, taking our our surface drive boats down there and, and going door to door and getting folks out um, so folks are trying to take everything they can which is understandable because you have you know unfortunate you get folks <coughs> trying to take advantage of people that are already down you know by looting anything that's worth a value anymore in their house so we actually were on uh, we did rescues during the day and we had some loop patrols at night where we'd go out and just kind of sit out and wait and, and see if anybody would come in and steal anything so here's my telephone number and email address um, I, had, I do have some business cards but I know everybody now has a cell phone so uh, you can put that in your, your telephone cell phone 
and just save it as game warden or Nathan or, or whoever. And uh, that way you have it. And I also have some, some business cards too, if anybody's interested in one of those. Um, but does anybody have any, any kind of questions or anything? Yes, sir. How many female game wardens? I don't know an exact number. I do know that I graduated with three. Um, I know we do have we do have several though, several female game wardens, and uh, they go through the academy just like everybody else, and, and, and they're stationed all across the state also. So I think Upshur County or Gray County, I think Upshur used to have a female game warden years ago. Um, yes, Atlanta. Yes, and um, so yes, they're they're spread out just like everybody else, and um, and uh, we have three in our academy, I believe. So. Um, I know Upshur County's kind of been a revolving door uh, for game wardens. I think we've had, I want to say five, four, five, six in the last eight years in Upshur County. I don't know why. I, and and some, sometimes it's folks trying to, they get stationed here and they want to go back home or something like that. Well, I'm, I'm back home, so uh, I'm not planning on going anywhere anytime soon. So uh, my, my plan is to be here for the long haul uh, and hopefully bring some trust and stability to the game warden office here in Upshur County. Plus, if y'all keep having this good food like y'all had today, I might come back regularly. Um, so with those two little boys at the house, I, I, uh, home-cooked meals is kind of few and far between, so don't, don't tell my wife I said that. So anyway, any other questions? Yes, sir. And I know other than being an armed presence there at Union Grove, you talked about the criminal justice class. Yes, well, uh, down there, I, we have the OGT trailer, our operation game thief, which is our, our hotline crime stoppers, wildlife crime stoppers uh, trailer. Y'all might have seen them around at some of the venues at, at Ducks Unlimited Delta, uh, some of the big stuff, Safari Club in Dallas. Uh, we had that down there at the Union Grove School not too long ago. Sometimes we'll, we'll go and speak about our career, you know, when we have deputies and constables and stuff like that uh, down there. We'll talk to some of their classes, of, you know, about uh, pursuing a career in this. Um, we also, uh, Mr. Gray, the superintendent that was down there, uh, he was big in archery, so I'd go out there to some of their archery practices and hang out. And uh, I know they got a shotgun team and, and, and bass team, which some of, a lot of the schools these days are, are getting into more of that, which is, which is great. Uh, so that could be something that you know you learn then, and you can take it for the rest of your life. You can play football and baseball, but when you get older, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be you know, fishing. That's what I'm, I'm planning on doing. So, Nathan, what about restocking deer? I know in Central Texas, South Texas, there's an overabundance. Where do those deer go? I know they trap them and take them somewhere. Yeah, usually that's all through the wildlife division. Um, they'll, they kind of, our biologists, they do their surveys and they're not counts and stuff like that. None of those are brought up in this area? I know they did some down in deep east Texas before. Uh, I haven't heard of anything recently that's, that's been up here. Um, that's kind of one of their, their things they do. You know, we're more on the police side and the law enforcement side, which is another thing. Baby deer. I get calls all the time about baby deer or blue jay that's got his wing hurt or, or uh, you know, there's a rabbit squirrel out here that's, you know, possum. Um, we have wildlife rehabilitators that'll take those, those animals in if they're orphaned or injured. And um, they're on our website. Go to our, our TVWD website, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and go by rehab or by county. We actually have a few rehabbers here that are volunteer that are permitted through the state uh, that will keep those orphaned animals. Uh, so we get, you know, this time of year, springtime, summertime, storm rolls through. There, well, there's seven baby owls out here. What do you want me to do? I said, well, I need to call a rehabber because, you know, we, we're in the business of putting people in jail, not yeah. so much. Okay. I mean, we'll help out when we can, sure. but we kind of we go that route. Yes, sir. Have you been on home start off? No, I, I think I'm going to kind of stay low-key on that. I, don't know. <laughs> I got more of a radio face and blend in, you know. Does the state uh, have any say on who they let be open? They open it up to volunteers, and uh, and then that's kind of how they go. Lots of these guys <laughs> like the Hollywood and, and the lots. And I've had them actually ride with me a couple times down in the old county. They, they were just in the area, and it's just kind of, it's different when, you, you know, you say something and they're like, hold on. I'd say that again, you know. It's like, well, I, can't, I don't even remember what I said. You know, you just start talking out there and, uh, and stuff like that. So, I don't know. They might, they might show up one day and they might jump in with the Greg County guy and and, uh, and I might jump in with them. I don't know. We'll see. I like to keep it low-key, though. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I got a question about wild hogs. Wild, wild pigs, pigs, all right. I've heard they're a big economic environmental or something problem in the state. And they're yes. Not, and they not enough them. bullets for them things. Uh, okay, so. Or beavers. Yeah, so. Or, there you go, Mr. Brown. A couple of questions would be a year or two ago, I don't know how long it was, something came out in the paper about somebody wanting to get a state program to poison those pigs. And I felt like it was kind of an environmental thing we shouldn't really get into. Don't tell them what's going to happen to the poison or who's going to get the poison. Was any of that going on or is it going on? I think the uh, I think Sid Miller at the the ag commissioner he put a thing out maybe last year about some warfarin, yeah. uh, and then I think they actually end up taking that back out because, like you said, with the the environmental effects, you know they, they poison that pig. Yes, it's to that pig only, and it'll poison that pig. But guess what eats those pigs when they die? Other animals. And so do they get the poison? And, and there wasn't a whole lot of enough research to, to go on. Say yes, we're for sure. It's only going to affect them. It's not going to affect other other species of animals out there. And so I think they actually took that back. So now the best thing to do is, is traps and uh, firearms, and that's that's pretty much the only only way to control them. If you can't control them, they're here to stay. Yeah, well, I, I haven't been hog hunting. You know, thinking about it, maybe if I find some friends or somebody that might want to do that if I get around to it or something. But so is it all right? <laughs> high-powered rifle or something to hunt hogs, in other words, you won't be automatically guilty of hunting deer just because you've got a rifle in the Right, or right, good question. A lot of folks, we, we ask folks to let us know we're going to be out on a big property, you know, hunting uh, at night, say, hey, we're going to be actually out here raccoon hunting or farm hunting, hog hunting. Let us know that way, if, you know, if you're out there and somebody sees a light or hears a gunshot, they don't call us at 2 a.m. and then we'll go out there and just y'all hog hunting. Um, or something like that. Communicate with you guys. Right, right. Because, like I said, there's one of me, and, and a lot of a lot of a lot of folks out there like to hunt and fish, and so communication is key for for anything on something like that. Yes, sir. So, I mean, like I said, one of me and a lot of y'all, and, and sometimes our backup may be you know 30, 40 minutes away. So uh, we'll be out in the middle of the woods, middle, way out outside the city limits, outside you know on the edge of the county, on the lake. You know, so we rely a lot on y'all to help us out. If if we, you know, if we get a, if we're out working this side of the county, you know, the, the precinct four up there, and we get a call, precinct one, we we need to, you know, have that open line of communication to let us know. We rely a lot on y'all to say, hey, we saw this happen. You know, because there's only there's only one of us or two of us for that whole area. So yeah, if, if, if people want to eat wild pig, consume them. Do you have any? Suggestion or advice or rules about that over just just uh, whatever your preference is on, on how to cook them or anything. Uh, which bring that's a good question. If y'all know any folks that might need some extra meat that are you know down on a luck or they have a lot of kids or you know they're doing programs for for folks that are are, are less fortunate, let me know. Uh, we're always looking for people to to donate meat to because I mean we get. You know, animals like that, you saw those deer and stuff like that, that we have all this meat that we like to donate to folks. And we have a few families that we do regularly do that too. But uh, if y'all know anybody, uh, holler at me after this and I'll, I'll get their information, their name, and we'll go from there and I'll get them some, some groceries. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank you all. The picture you showed with where you got the deer out of the backyard or something like that, was that in your vehicle? Yes. Yep. Yep. Did it have a seatbelt on? Set, set a few sirens off and then broke, broke the window up and down. <laughs> <laughs> we, got them, we got them in there. Okay, good deal. Great program. Thanks for coming. Uh,